Hello, everyone. We live. <laughs> All right, I'm looking. We looking at two. Okay. Okay. All right, we're gonna wait. It's just a. We're gonna give it about ten. Nine, <laughs> I was to say you. Eight. I'm already. I'm already, I'm already two seconds off. All right. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> okay. So let's see if we right, should so. be here or here. All right. You you look at me. I'm I'm look over here. Boom. Okay. Where are you looking? I'm looking right in this circle. Okay. Okay, do it again. Look, do what again? Look in the uh, circle so All I right. can see. Boom. I'm looking. Okay, I'm going to look straight ahead. What's it look like? Look like you looking over there. Okay, so I better look in the circle. Okay. Hey, Sabrina. Hey, Sabrina. <laughs> <laughs> We're just trying to get everything going here because uh, we don't have the... Uh, the right stuff. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. Okay, come on. Go We're on. just trying to get it set up. So, okay. Well, welcome everybody. Thank you for joining in. Um, as the title of this video said, we, me and Jamal, are going to be talking about some things that are super important to us, some things that we have been experiencing throughout our life and here um, in greater detail and kind of uh, God has been dealing with it with us um, a little bit more fervently. I'll put it that way. Absolutely. Um, and so before we even get into that topic, I just want to start by saying that th we have a ministry, Rising Ground. And some of the things that you hear, it may sound a little bit different when you first hear it just because of our perception and how we receive information. But we want to start by clearly stating that Christ is the center of us, of our lives, and of our ministry. And so everything that we say comes from that place. And that um, everything that we also say is biblically sound. And we do have scripture and verses that can back it up. If that is a concern of yours that, or if that is something that you always look for, you know, when hearing someone speak or when they talk about God, which I commend because that's important to know who you're listening to and what they're talking about and even the foundation of their life and the foundation of their beliefs and, um, you know, the, the funnel from which they're, they're speaking through. So I just wanted to start by saying that. Absolutely. Um, I've, I've even had people, um, we have a, a YouTube channel and I, I've even had people to, um, comment and say, what are you talking about? I yeah. mean, you know, they, they will say like, well, what, what, can you show me this in the scripture? Or they'll, or they'll say, what do you mean when you say this about God? Um, so we have had some real interactions with people that, um, you know, are a little concerned or they're a little worried or whatever it is. And, and it's all perception. So mm -hmm. um, we have to be willing to have a conversation with one another when, we, when we're confused or when we don't understand something. I right. think that's the best place to, to go first because, you know, God is spirit and God is truth. So that's, that's more of an, of, of an inward connection. Um, displayed outwardly when you when you give it a chance so sometimes a conversation you can find out what you can't find out just watching a video so uh we just wanted to just, you know set that up that way right do you have anything else no that's it on that okay so um i wanted to specifically uh, set this up that you know this particular way so this ministry has a we have a specific assignment, mandate, whatever you, you want to say from God. Um, and I'll start it off this way. Growing up, uh, my mother, is, she was my pastor. She, you know, she is my, my pastor still. And I watched my mom go through, I mean, she went through hell. My mom was, I mean, mom, if you, if you see this, I'm sorry, but I got to let it out. She don't mind. She don't mind. My mother's been, she's, she's been, she's, she was raped. Um, she's been in abusive relationships after that. Um, I mean, it's, 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 it's countless things. And I've always seen my standard of living or even for a female was watching my, my mom. And, you know, she got, a, she got kind of a hard, a hard task in, in the beginning because I've, I've, my mom just was always this strong, strong woman in my viewpoint. And I watched her 
go from, uh, you know, uh, 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 I don't want to call her worldly, but she, she wasn't saved or she wasn't Christian to becoming a Christian and totally diving into the scripture. And she and she wanted she went into the scripture that way because she simply wanted to know God. It wasn't about accolades. It wasn't about this and this. So I watched my mom relentlessly pursue God. So I would kind of sit back, you know, I'm like, man, I'm like, this is crazy. You know what I mean? I'm like, how you keep doing? I mean, she would go in her prayer room, in her actual prayer room, and she would be in there for 24 hours because she wanted to know God. And she, she year after year after year after year after year. So that that's the kind of thing that I was used to seeing somebody pursue God like in the scriptures, in the word. So, you know, I remember one time my mom, I was, I was uh, 18, 19, and, uh, you know, still at home. And uh, she came in my room after the weekend was over and she said, you know, I just wanted to tell you, um, God is disappointed in you because I had come off a, a week of just a weekend of just straight nuts and wilding stuff, out. wilding out. So she came in there with that and I was like, you know, you know, put my head down. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I've always had an, an installation of God, you know, growing up with your mom, young to old, you're you going to get something. So. Um, I would go in my Bible and I'm trying to read and I'm reading, you know, I'm like, and then you're falling asleep and we all, we all, been, you know, been there. We've been falling asleep in church. And, and it's like, you know, I think that's the common thing, but year after year, when I try to get in the word and I'm trying to do it this way, and it's like, it's just something just was just put me at a halt. So there came a time, fast forward, we we're married, we're, we're in a, um, we're in a, uh, a, a, a valley per se. God was taking us through our little journey and uh, was pre pretty rough. And I remember looking out the window one day and I said, uh, but first I was in my, in, in my room and I was like, man, I can't do this. I can't do this like my mom. I just can't. I've ne I never, I never was a good student, but she wasn't even a good student, but I'm like, I didn't, you know, I wasn't, I didn't like school or like that. I, I mean, I went through it or whatever, but I didn't like it. So I remember s saying that I'm like, I can't do this. And I, then I remember I went from my room into the living room and um, I remember looking out the window and, I, and God said, I didn't call you to do it like she like she does it. And I'm like, yeah, that's what they all say. You know, I'm like, you know, mm -hmm. but something in me clicked after about a couple of minutes. And I'm like, and I finally got what God was trying to show me through all those years of trying to do God, to pursue God that way. And God was like, again, I didn't call you to do it that way. I, I called you to do it another way. So, okay, that, that, that's the setup. So this ministry and specifically me, my story is being how God is dealing with me. And I think you, 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 you too. It's, it's like, God is like, um, I have another way for you, for me to reach the world through you. And that is, you don't see us using a lot of scriptures at times. You don't see us opening up the Bible you, you know, with, with specific words, there are times that that will have happened because I've done it. But for most part, this ministry, the mandate on us and the ministry is God is like, okay, how do you confirm God? How, how do you confirm God's destiny specifically for your life? And for me, God is like, you have to, I want you to get to know me, to get to trust me, to get to believe me specifically through the inside, meaning God has to give me revelation, knowledge, and understanding only by way of the inside, the download. You, you get a revelation. We all get them and we all get those understandings, but specifically, he's not allowing us, this ministry, to go into the Bible like a regular church. It's specifically, we have to learn how to depend and rely on the spirit of God within at all times. If the Bible gets snatched away tomorrow, all of them, how would you be able to live? I mean, most people rely on their pastor's word. They rely on people saying, just go to the scriptures and look. If you didn't have it, how would you make it? Right. You have to start relying on and trusting on the God within to step by step take you every single way there. So the ministry doesn't, we're not saying who whoever wants to be a part of this ministry that you have to do it that way. 
We, we just advocate divine flow. So whatever flow God has you in, if it's reading the, the, the Bible that way, cool. If it's not cool, it's whatever. So, but you have to learn, but the, the principle, the purpose is learning how to depend and rely on God totally mm -hmm. without any, um, examples, you know what I mean? So that's very key. Yeah. I mean, and you know, that's the thing that has been very difficult for us. And I kind of mentioned this in the last video that um, I did as far as, you know, why don't things work out for you? And the premise of that topic was that a lot of times things don't work out for us the way that we want them to because we're trying to do them our way versus the way that God is leading us to, yeah. um, to do it and to execute a thing. And that is the only way that you gain true success, which we talked about that together in our last live video, you know, the definition of success and kind of redefining that in our own lives. And what does that look like? And I'm not talking necessarily about material success or gain, but just being a success in life and reaching your destiny and walking in the purpose and the calling that God has upon you. And the only way that you can you know, successfully navigate this life is by being totally dependent on God. And that is, that's like the purpose in God kind of leading you to the way that he wants you to walk out this life, to walk out the road that is paved for you personally and specifically. And that's something that we have learned and are learning to do even as a couple and as for our family, Absolutely. you know, that there are so many things that, you know, you hear people say, well, why don't you just do um, A, B, and C? These are your steps to success. These are the things that you need to do to to get a house, to, to be um, a successful entrepreneur, to be a successful business owner, yeah. to um, gain this amount of money in this specific time, to be a minister, to be a coach, to be, you know, all of these things, whatever it is that you feel drawn to do, then we all have been giving these um, somewhat roadmaps by the world on how to do it. We don't knock these roadmaps because they're for whoever they're for. But the whole key is you have to be in tune with God to see how he wants you to use that or to use anything else or to not use any of those things at all. Because the whole point is that if you get tripped up in trying to do it another person's way, then you will never successfully reach your destiny. And the only way that you can truly thrive and and not just survive this world or not just to barely make it but to truly thrive is by you being in your thriving space and the only way you can get to that thriving space is by you being open to God by you listening to the Holy Spirit and then even like Jamal was saying in his example here he was following or thinking <laughs> that he had to follow um, you know, this, this way of studying the Bible and the way that he saw someone else do it. And it could seem so hard to accept that God is saying, no, I, I have another path for you. I have another direction that I'm taking you in. And the key is to truly uh, be in tune with the spirit so that you know that you're being led by God to do these things that even seem uncommon or, um, they're not so ordinary. They're not the, the traditional route that most people would tell you to take or things that you should do. So that's what, you know, that's what we focus on and that's yeah. how we try to live our life. And we just wanted to share this because sometimes people don't know what to do. You feel discouraged. You feel that you're trying to do it the way that the world tells you to and you're still, and it's still not happening for you or things right. aren't still working for you when Hey, Jeanette. What if God wants you to do it another way, you know? Hey, Jeanette, what's up? Um, so, yeah, so that's what we are are living by and continually trying to live, live by. And that is what we want to share with others so that you feel more comfortable and confident in the path that God has set for you. Go ahead. Absolutely. And, um, and you know what? You, you, can't, you can't deny what time that we're in between the Corona stuff and just, yeah. and then the things that, that are going to come after that, God is pos positioning things so that, um, we can get ahead of the game. And, mm -hmm. you know, 
I had a guy that given me a song a long time ago. I, I named the song Supernova. And I keep saying this in, in a lot of videos, but if it's very important, one of the lyrics is just like, God is like, we've been here too long. We have to go. So where have we been too long? We've been accustomed to God and learning about God, knowing about God in this particular way that God is like, okay, now we have to get closer in a more, in a different way. And it's not really different because we've been taught the Holy Spirit. We've been taught, learn, you know, be guided by the Holy Spirit. That's that. But in, but when you connect that, that reasoning with all the other reasonings around how we learn about God and what, what God requires of us, then it can get jumbled up and it's gotten jumbled up. So I had God is like, we've been here too long. We have to get closer to who we really are and be getting closer and being to who, to who you really are, your spirit first. Mm -hmm. So you have to learn how to completely and totally live in that place in this body. You know, we, we hit and miss, we straddle the fence, we jump and we jump back. And most times we're outside of the kingdom versus being in, inside of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. So when you get the courage, and it's all about courage, when you have the courage to, to, to start and stand in the thing that you know God is telling you, which is completely, you have to connect with me in a deeper way. Yeah. Again, it doesn't mean you won't be reading the Bible, you won't do these things. It's specifically allowing God to guide your day-to-day -day movements. Mm -hmm. So if God tells you, I need you to get up and read Psalms 991, then you do it. If God says, get up and go feed the, the birds or, or, or wash your feet, you know what I mean? You have to learn how to do it. And that's, that's this time now we're practicing how to hear from God because the time is coming when that's the only thing that you're going to have. And that's, that connects you more powerfully to the kingdom than even just reading the book. Mm -hmm. Because you can get lost in reading the book and not develop your spiritual muscles and everything. Right. And that sounds like it's weird. It can happen, but it happens all the time. How many Christians, how many people do we know who read the Bible day to day, but they out here raping kids? You know what I mean? They out here doing stuff that, that um, they, they, they know that they shouldn't do, but they can't control it because they haven't allowed that space in them, that real them, to uh, 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 be empowered to the point that, they're, they're, man, they're, they're God, man, they're, they're, they're Christ. And that's who we are called to be. You got to get it, man. So that's, that's why we're here. That's what we wanted to share. And you know, it's, it's also, you have, you have mentioned this, but it's about having that intimate relationship with God for yourself. You know, you have mentioned about, you know, sometimes we get dependent on other people to give us words or we get dependent on um you know our pastors or even our bibles you know which is it's good when you're first starting out it's good right. when you're first um you know you first become a believer or you're first trying to gain more faith or you're trying to understand god better you want a deeper connection with god that's fine but then it comes a point when god is saying okay i need you to have this intimate relationship and it's not so much that that God needs that from us but God knows that that is what is required in order for us to move um, forward in life successfully and to gain everything that God has for us that God wants to give to us and I want to go back to the title is how do you know I think it said like, how do you know what to do or how do you know what God wants you to do? And the, the way that you'll start knowing what is the path that is carved out for you is it will keep repeating itself to you. You will continue to get signs. You will continue to get messages. People will continue to speak certain things to you. And when you have that intimate relationship with Christ, then you'll, you can feel it. It will hit you within your spirit. And yeah, you can ignore it, you can reject it, right. you can uh, try to dismiss it and act like, oh, that was just a coincidence or that wasn't really for me. But when the truth is, when it's for you, then it's for you and you know it. Mm -hmm. And the only way that you start to know what God wants you to really do is like you said, you start to strengthen your spiritual muscle. You begin to spend that time with God intimately and personally. You are open to hearing the spirit. You are open to letting go of all of the things that maybe you have clung to the things that you have continued to 
rely upon. You are, you are willing to let that go and you are willing to rely completely and solely on God to be in control of your life and to lead you every step of the way because we know it gets hard. We know that you can be down to the wire on some things, whether it's a decision that you need to make, there's you know maybe some choices that are looming over you and when you feel like okay god i've been waiting i've been trying to be patient i've i've listened to you i have a connection with you but when it still feels like something is not moving then that's when we want to just let go of what god has been telling us and what you have been feeling we get impressions we feel the the spirit of god in us telling us something but when we want to just forfeit all of that and depend on what someone else is telling us to do or a system tells us how to do something that's right when you have to stand firm in right. what you feel God is telling you yep. individually and how to move about your life because that's the whole thing we all want to live a life that is successful that is thriving that is plentiful with health wealth money goodness love peace all of those things, right? We all want that. But the only way that we can really get to it is by relying on God and allowing him to direct us to get there to it. Because if we are always relying on something else or another system or the way someone else has done a thing, then we'll never get to our best place. We'll never arrive to that place of freedom and of victory. And the only time that God is... is is not speaking to you anymore. Sometimes there's there's moments of, of quietness and, and of stillness, um, which again, that's when you have to rely on what he told you the first time or what, what um, you felt in your spirit, what promises you have. And I just feel, you know, I want to encourage people who have dreams from God, who have visions from God, who believe that God is telling them something. I just want to encourage you that, that God does speak to you. It may come in many different forms. It may come in many different ways. And there are times maybe you feel lonely or maybe you feel like you're the only one that's hearing from God. And you, yeah, you heard from God, but it doesn't look like it's happening or nothing is working out for you. I just want to encourage you to, to just rest in, in, in his spirit. Rest in the knowingness that God has you, has your back, and wants the best for you. And the only way, again, that we can get to that best place is by us being in a place of surrender by us allowing God to direct us personally. That's what we're hitting home to you yes. is that it's a personal walk. It's an individual walk. This is not about what so-and-so does in your neighborhood, in your church, at your job, down the street, down the block. It's what God has for you and how you are to walk out and to live out your life. And I guarantee when you get to that place, you will receive the success. You will receive the things that you've asked for, that you've prayed for, that you're believing God to do. Those things will come to pass in your life. But you just stay diligent. You stay open to hearing from God and allow everything else to work out and to come into your life. Absolutely. And there's a term, consider it not strange. So when you get a word... Yeah. From God and it doesn't seem like it it lines up with the things that you've been taught or you know even just your conditioning around how you've been taught you know you, you got to lean into it man because we don't again we don't have the vantage point that God has mm -hmm. and um, only God can give you something that everybody needs um, that only you can give because you've been mandated to give it you know you you've been chosen so this is a time where we lean into what god is specifically saying specifically saying for you mm -hmm. and your family and your life and your ministry whatever it is uh, even it's not even about a ministry because you know we all hold god so we have but we have to learn how to flex that muscle so okay. yeah so well, we appreciate you guys listening, taking your time out to listen. We will repost this. Uh, we will share it. Um, if you found that anything in what we had to say was useful and it's, and it's, and it's reaching you and it's touching you and you feel like maybe God is, is telling you to share it, do it. Do it. If you don't, don't. You know, I mean, that's just what it is. There you go. Um, yeah. yeah. You feel good? It. I feel good. All right. I feel good. Okay. Um, 
thank you. All right. Have a blessed week. See you guys. Bye. Bye.